What's up, Crossroads? Um, glad that you're here. Hope that you're here. Um, what's going on in your world? Me? Well, you know, beard's just getting a little more fluffy. And uh, yesterday was a strange day because midweek is always that time that I get to see you guys. Well, I didn't get to see you, but I heard from several of you. Thank you so much for your text, uh, for your messages. Um, and it, it's one of the crazy things is as your youth pastor, there are a lot of times, you know, I'm just wondering, am I speaking what God's laid on my heart or am I speaking just what I'm thinking is going on? And uh, as we've said earlier, a couple of months ago, God laid this message on my heart, this series on my heart. And yesterday, even as I recorded yesterday, I was like, I don't know if this really applies to anybody, but had several students respond through the text me. I uh, really would love to hear from you. What What is it that makes you anxious? Uh, had several, uh, I guess it was students that responded. I'm not sure. It could have been parents even. But a lot of people responded to that. And that helped me, made me feel, <laughs> made me less anxious because I, I knew that this was something that was really hard on people. People deal with this. And so uh, today we're going to look at what yesterday or what today um, the devotion was about today. And he was talking about Paul. And when Paul was in prison, um, I don't know if any of you have ever been in prison. This might shock you. I've never been in prison. I've never been in jail. I've never been arrested. I've never been in the back of a place. Well, I've, I was in the back of a police car. It wasn't because I was doing anything wrong. They were at a, it was a church thing. And I just said, I've never been in the back of a police car. And so they put four of us in the back of the police car when we were teenagers. And I was like, <laughs> no, like this. Anyway, Paul was in prison. And talking about unknown future, and that's, that's what he's kind of talking about when he was writing. Um, uh, when the author was writing this, he, he said, you know, Paul was facing an uncertain future. And I think that's something that all of us throughout life, we, we have questions about what tomorrow holds. Um, during a time like this, a season where our world is facing something, I think we all, to an extent, can say, well, I don't know. I'm that way right now. What does summer hold for Crossroads? I don't really know. What does, um, what does summer hold as far as our band people being able to do uh, band camps and our cheerleaders being able to do cheer camps and our football teams being able to do uh, football workouts and things like that? I, I don't know what that means. I don't know what is going to hold. But there's comfort in knowing that even though we don't know, God knows. There is comfort in that. And at times, that's the only thing that can bring us comfort. Being anxious about things is something that's natural, I think. I think there's a part of all of us that worry to an extent. Some people more so than others. Some people, their imagination grabs hold of them and they worry. Have you ever, all right, let's just say you go out at night and you hear a sound. And as soon as you hear that sound, your mind go through, goes through 5,000 different scenarios of what's about to happen. You know, there is a, a pack of ninjas in the woods close to your house. Maybe you don't live in the woods. There's a pack of ninjas right next to your mailbox. And they're ninjas, so you can't see a ninja. But you know at any moment, they're just going to pop out on your sky, 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 sky. It goes through our mind. And we get ourselves all like, huh? You ever going outside like your parents say, hey, go to the mailbox, put this in the mailbox, and you find yourself like, oh, man, it's no big deal. I'm out here tonight. And when you're walking back to the house, you start walking fast, and before long, you're in a dead spread because you know the boogeyman's on your heels. It happens. But our imagination, a lot of times, is what brings us to that point. So what I'm trying to say is a lot of times, if we can just control what's going on in our mind and not look for something to be worried about, um, when I first started ministry, 6,018 years ago, uh, when I first started, I can remember talking to the pastor, and I went to him uh, about a lady that was in our church, and this was, this was not West End, this was another church in the county a, a long, long time ago, and I went to him and I said, um, hey, I, I need to talk to you about, uh, sorry, I'm going to have to call you back, uh, um, 
I need to talk to you about Miss So-and-so. And I called her name. And when I called her name, he said, yeah. And I said, man, she's very concerned about this and this and this. And he said, Kenny, I don't know how to say this other than just to come right out. She's one of those ladies that's going to worry about things. She's going to make up things to worry about when there's actually nothing that really she really needs to worry about. So that kind of helped me understand, oh, I got you, I got you. And I find myself in that same position. But this is Paul, and Paul is in a real situation. He has been arrested for being a follower of Christ. Uh, you know Paul. Paul was Saul. Saul was the one that, that held the coats of people while they stoned Philip, uh, the first martyr for Christ. Uh, but Paul has had a radical transformation. Uh, God breathed into his life, and he came back to life, right? Or he came to life. And so as Paul's in prison, uh, he don't know what the, tomorrow holds. But he writes in, in this passage of Scripture, um, do not, Philippians chapter 4, uh, let's see, verses 6 through 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Our mind, a lot of times, can convince us that there's something wrong when in actuality there's nothing wrong. Our, our minds can get so strong till it affects our heart and causes us to be troubled. But Paul tells us right here, don't be anxious about anything, but by everything, prayer and petition, calling out to God for help. Not just, Lord, I'm in trouble, but God, help me. Help me through this time. And it says that he will give you that peace that passes all understanding. The first time I can tell you that I really remember finding that peace that passes all understanding is when my mother passed away. And people would come to me and go, how are you dealing with this? And I said, man, it's just God. You know, hey, it doesn't look like this has wrecked your world. I said, man, it's totally wrecked my world. I lost my mother. But there is a peace that is found in Jesus Christ. My hope for you is that you found that peace in Jesus Christ. Um, my plan is to do five of these a week, and then I'll, I'll take my Saturday off just like you'll take your Saturday off. But we're continuing to do our study. Um, send me a message. Let me know what you're getting during your devotion time. Send me a text. My, my phone number is right here. Send me a text. Let me know what you're getting uh, during this devotion time. And like I said yesterday, I'm going to be calling on some of you to help out with our midweek service. And I'll be getting in touch with some folks soon about that because uh, we already got a direction that we're headed next week. We are looking at anxiety. Why so anxious? So, man, just dig into God. You've got time. Spend some time with God. Come to better understanding who God is. And, man, let your light shine in all that you do. See ya.